All right, friends, it's Kate Moore here with the Mom Boss Mentor. And today I have a special guest, Hannah. And Hannah's joining us from the UK. I'm really excited for you to get to know and hear her story of how she transitioned from a previous career to what she's doing now as an entrepreneur. So Hannah, welcome to the show. Uh, I want to tell us what you used to do and a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I used to be a teacher, a secondary teacher, and then I transitioned a couple of years ago into being a virtual assistant. And then from then I transitioned to being a virtual assistant coach and mentor. So that's been my journey so far. Okay, so let's talk about that for a bit, because uh, going from a teacher to a virtual assistant, some people would be like, what happened? Like, why did you leave teaching? Sure. Um, so basically, I loved teaching. I loved the being in the classroom. I loved the sort of coaching of children and mentoring of children and building relationships. But it is a really highly pressured career, which was fine at that time of my life. Um, it's notorious for causing uh, mental health issues. Um, a lot of people really struggle with it, with the workload, with bringing it home. And for me, the turning point was when I had my kids. I've got two young kids now. And when I had my daughter, my eldest, I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I cannot bring this sort of work home with me. I can't be the most effective mum to my children because I'm not the sort of person that can leave the work at the office door and come home and be a different person. That's just not me. And for some people it worked and that's great. But I knew at that point that something had to change. And being like a, a business owner was always a dream of mine. I didn't know what sort of business I wanted to own but I knew for years that it was something I wanted to do and that just seemed like the perfect opportunity so that's when I when my maternity leave ended I set up as a virtual assistant and I've not looked back oh my gosh okay so I love that because two things that you touched on one they kind of always had that entrepreneur spirit inside of you um so it was like kind of fulfilling that yearning or that desire to be your own boss the two the flexibility that you're able to now have to be with your kids as, you know, a work at home mom, not, not a stay at home mom, like you're working, but you know, um, and so balancing. So could you kind of share the journey of, you know, um, some of the lessons you learned or some of the tips you'd have for somebody that's maybe taking that leap to be a work at home mom? Absolutely. I think for me, the biggest tip is to, be, to reach out to other people that are in the same uh, that have been in through the same thing with virtual assistants definitely there's a massively supportive community it's such a wonderful community to be, to be a part of and there's facebook groups i have one and there's um forums and all sorts and other vas are so willing to help you on your journey because it can be quite lonely um obviously you'll know being a business owner and working from home you know it can be and especially making that transition from employment can be really lonely so seeking support and being willing to reach out and ask questions um is a, is a invaluable i think when you're making that journey um it'll stop you falling into the same pitfalls that other people might have done you can learn from their mistakes um so definitely i'd say that's my biggest tip yeah yeah so so as we talk about that and like avoiding the pitfalls so you are a virtual assistant but you now you are also a coach for people looking at creating virtual assistant business do you want to tell yeah. us a little bit about that Sure. Yeah. So I, um, I'm a coach and I specialize in helping mainly mums, a lot of my clients are mums, but not, not only um, mums and people who lack confidence, because that's something that I've definitely suffered with in the past myself with low self-esteem, thinking I can't do things and I've had therapy for it. And actually now I wouldn't say I've overcome it because I don't think, I think something like that you live with, um, but I've learned the tools I needed to turn it to my advantage as a business owner. So now I help other people in that same position who maybe really want to set up as a VA, but just don't have the confidence to start or um, they're nervous about starting or they're a mum and they're just thinking, how am I going to manage this whole mum work life balance thing? Um, and that's my area of, uh, of expertise. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you hit it on the head, like the time blocking or the time management. So is there a tip or a trick? Like, um, I don't need you to give us all your secrets because people can touch base with you, um, you know, with your link below, but, um, any tips that you would have for a mom that's like struggling, like you said, like not thinking that they can't do this because of time or because of courage. 
Yeah, absolutely. In terms of time, I would say get used to working in small parts. As a mum, I think as a, a mum working at home, it's very difficult to say, I'm going to spend three hours doing this, but actually have a to-do list ready. And then when the kids are having dinner, if they're happy, just quickly jump on your emails or try and tick something off your to-do list. So just be used to be, be ready to be flexible and work whenever the opportunity presents itself. Um, in terms of the confidence, I would say, remember, 70% of people have faced imposter syndrome at some point in their lives. So you're in the majority. It's a really common thing. And actually, it commonly affects high flyers and people who are very successful. So actually, on the contrary, if you're thinking I'm not good enough, it's probably the other way around. It's probably you're very, very good, but you just you're you're making that next step up. And everyone feels it when they're making that next step up to something new in their life and stepping just out of their comfort zone. It's perfectly normal, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, I can say I I have had confidence issues. You, you mentioned that you have had confidence issues is something that we never get over. It's mm. like that steam fright, right? Like you have that butterfly almost every day. Can I do this? Can I go the next step? But you don't know unless you try. And I always like to encourage people like, just try it. Like worst case scenario, you don't like it or it doesn't work, but at least you tried because best case scenario is the next best thing. Like it's going to take you to the next level. So Absolutely. I'm going to see that um, okay. So I love this. And we had talked before about um, the autonomy and the perks of being your own boss, having autonomy and making your own decisions. Do you want to talk about some of those perks of now being your own boss? Absolutely. Yeah. So the things that used to keep me awake at night when I was teaching were things that I had no control over. And that was what was most frustrating for me. Um, it was things that I'd been told I had to do or things that I was worrying about that hadn't even happened yet. And I'm not going to sit here and say that being a business owner isn't stressful. I'm not going to sell it in that way because it will be at times because, you know, it's all on you. Right. But the difference now is that m the things that I that might stress me out or that I might have concerns about I can make steps to change like you said it's the autonomy I have control over it if I'm worried about a particular service that I'm offering I can go and upskill and get some training in it or I can take it off my services list if there's something I'm not enjoying doing I have flexibility there um so it's yeah there's a lot of freedom there and especially being a working mum I'd say the biggest thing for me is flexibility because I choose my working hours and you know I don't have set times I work with set clients so if my kids are sick I can just flip things around more often than not my clients don't even have to know I can be there as a mum work at a different time it's not a problem so that was the real game changer for me and I, I'm, I'm really enjoying that and I think that's one of the biggest advantages I'd say definitely oh absolutely yeah not having to call and ask for permission for a day off <laughs> when your kids are sick uh hands down the best feeling ever <laughs> Um, okay, and then last but not least, I wanted to just talk touch on because you are a virtual assistant. Um, you had mentioned before when we chatted that it's you know, you've always been passionate about organization and routine. Are there other kind of skill sets that if somebody's thinking about becoming a virtual assistant that they should kind of think like, oh, okay, I love to do those kind of things. Sure. Yeah, obviously organization is a really big one because you're going to be doing other people's organization and filing and emails and all of that. So that's a pretty big one. Um, but other than that, I'd say you have to be a good communicator because obviously in this in this virtual age, you might be communicating with clients on email or on Slack, you know, by 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 writing. It might not always be in a meeting where you can see their face. So you have to know how you're coming across um, and be on the ball with communication. That's a real big one. Um, and the only other thing is just be able to use your initiative, be motivated, be proactive, because you're on your own a lot of the time. You don't have a boss there, like telling you what to do the whole time. So you've got to think what's next. What do I need to do for your own business and for your clients' businesses? Oh, yeah, I love that. And I know that me, I, oh, I need all the help I can get, right? And that's why we get virtual assistance is because, um, you know, it allows us to stay in our element of our area of expertise and not be bogged down by the day to day. I mean, it's why CAOs have executive assistants. It's why, you know, high performing people have help because many hands make light work. And you know, if you can source out, that means that you can produce more um, in your area of expertise. So uh, Hannah, thank you so much for sharing one, your expertise, one, uh, two, your experiences as you transitioned 
from teacher to virtual assistant. And I want to encourage anyone that is thinking about, is this the right career for me? Is this the right move for me? Or maybe I need some help and I need Hannah in my life to go and um, feel free to connect with her on social or in the links below. And of course, subscribe to the channel so that you can hear more stories like Hannah's on our next episode. Thanks so much, Hannah. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Cheers. Mm -hmm.